Hello, good afternoon, avid readers of English literature. It is my very honor and a privilege to introduce William Blake's selected poetry. And this time I have with me the Penguin Poetry Library, edited with an introduction by W.H. Stevenson. He leaves enjoying constant intercourse with the world of spirits. He receives visits from Shakespeare, Milton, Dainty Voltaire, etc., 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 and has given me repeatedly their very words in their conversations. Henry Craig Robinson in a letter to Dorothy Wordsworth. William Blake was born in Broad Street in 1757, the son of a London hosier. Having attended Henry Parr's drawing school in the Strand, he was in 1772 apprenticed to Henry Bazier, engraver to the Society of Antiquaries, and later was admitted as a student to the Royal Academy, where he exhibited in 1780. He married Catherine Boucher in 1782 and in 1783 published poetical sketches. The first of his illuminated books was Songs of Innocence, 1789, which, like the Book of Pale, published in the same year, has as its main themes the celebration of innocence and its inviolability. Blake sets out his ideas more fully in his chief prose work, the Marriage of Heaven and Hell, 1791, which proclaims lifelong belief in the moral primacy of the imagination. But in Songs of Experience, 1794, he recognizes the power of repression, and in a series of short narrative poems, he looks for mankind's redemption from oppression through a resurgence of imaginative life. By 1797, he was ready for epic valor, was never finished, but in Milton and Jerusalem, he presents his renewed vision of reconciliation among the wearing fragments of humanity. Other striking poems of his middle years are the lyrics of the Pickering Manuscript and the Everlasting Gospel. But in the last years of his life, he expressed himself in drawing rather than poetry. Little of Blake's work was published in conventional form. He combined his vocations as poet and graphic artist to produce books that are virtually stunning. He also designed illustrations of works by other poets and devised his own technique for producing large watercolor illustrations and color printed drawings. Blake died in 1827, an old man feeble and tottering, but not in spirit and life, not in the real man, the imagination which he lived forever. Thank you so much. Farewell.